Regardless of what genre you produce, drums are an essential part to any production, and today I'm gonna to show you what I consider to be the best way to program them in Studio One. So recently I put out a video about my production template, which you can watch right here. But in that video, I showed you guys how I always separate my drums on the timeline as I'm creating. And today I wanna to show you a little bit more about my drum programming workflow, why this method works so well for me, and maybe why you might like it as well. Let's dive in. Okay, so when I say separating your drums, I am referring to having one track for every drum sound that you are using, much like I have here in front of me. We're going to dive exactly into why I think this is the best way, but the summary is that by doing it this way, it gives you more control when it comes to arranging and mixing, and once you integrate that into a template and maybe combine it with some macros, this also helps speed up your workflow tremendously. Let me give you a super quick demo. So for this demo, I will be using my Beatmakers template, which is my production template and my Beatmakers toolbar, which is a macro toolbar that I built to speed up beat making using MIDI. And I'll make sure to link both of those down below in case you are interested. But okay, when I'm starting out with drums, I like to begin with my snare and hi-hat because unlike kicks and 808s, these elements are pretty fixed, meaning that they usually fall in the same position. For example, a snare in most genres will fall either on beats two and four or on beat three. So then with that in mind, I can double click here on the timeline for that snare track and open up the piano roll. From here, I can go over to my toolbar at the top and under snares and claps, select the VST that I'm using. So in my case, that would be sample one and then decide where I want to place that snare. So let me just do snare on three and boom, there it is. From here, I can click out of this and then go down to my hi-hat track, double click on that to open up the piano roll. And then likewise, I can go over to my macro toolbar under hats, select the VST. Again, I'm using sample one for this. And then for this, I am going to program eighth notes. And there we go. From here, I'm gonna go over to my kick drum, which is this right here. Now for this one, I basically have two options when it comes to creating. I can either click my notes in by hand or I can program those myself with a hardware controller like an Atom. Now from my experience, playing the kick in by hand on a hardware controller is a much faster method because you are programming based on feel as opposed to trying to guess where on the grid these notes should go. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Now, if I'm not programming this by hand, I don't even need this MIDI event. So I'm just gonna go over to the beginning of the timeline, hit the metronome to make sure that's on, and then hit the record button. Now from here, if I'm not happy with my performance, I can open up the piano roll and then once again, use my toolbar to quantize my notes. So I'm gonna go to time and velocity, quantize, quantize note lengths, and let's make them 16th. And while we're here, let's also make the velocity 100%. So these kicks hit hard. And this is what we got. Finally, I think I'm going to add a clap to accentuate some of my snares. So let me bring up that piano roll on that track right here. And then again, using my toolbar, I'm gonna go over to snares and claps. I'm gonna do, I'm using impact for this and I'm gonna place it on every third beat. Now I only want these claps on every other snare. So I'm gonna delete these two right here. And now we have a really solid drum groove that I created super quickly. Let's take a listen. Now, that was a quick demo of me creating drums, but let's talk about why having them pre-tracked out or separated, like I have here, is a game changer. By already having them separated as opposed to having them all in one track, I can mix them way faster because this gives me the ability to open up my inspector window by clicking the eye icon on the top left here and immediately begin to adjust volumes and add effects for each individual track without ever having to open up the mixer window. So for example, let's focus on the clap. If I want to work on the clap, I can quickly click on the clap track and then lower the volume so it's not overpowering the snare by using the volume fader in the inspector window. Additionally, from here, I can even add inserts. So let's say, for example, I want to add a reverb so that it blends a little better. I can definitely do that from right here.
So you see, by having my drums on their own separate tracks, I can quickly control and manipulate them and keep the vibes going. And this is extremely important for someone who likes to mix as they produce. If I had all my drums on one track, I would be forced to either continuously open up the mixer window every time that I wanted to add an effect to a drum sound, or if you're using Impact XT, I would have to continuously change the channel of what you want to affect in this little drop down menu. Neither of these options are effective ways of keeping the creativity flowing. The other reason that I like to have my drums separated it is because when I am producing, I like to not only hear, but also see what my production is doing and when it's doing it. So here in front of me, I have a fully finished beat to demonstrate this. Now, usually when I'm creating, I use the arranger track that you see right up here to segment my beat into different sections like intros, verses, and choruses. And often I will include or remove certain elements in each of those segments to differentiate them. So for example, on the chorus here, I might add an additional clap with a huge reverb or a percussive sound to really bring that chorus to life and let the listener know that we are in a different section. If I had everything on one track, then there is no way for me to visibly see what is or what is not there in the different sections, which forces me to stop and think and ultimately interrupts my flow. Conversely, if all my drums have their own separate tracks, I can not only listen, but visually see what is happening in front of me without having to guess, which helps me make decisions quicker. This also helps me a ton because as I'm creating, I usually start out with the chorus, which is the main part, and then later take things away that don't make sense or to create other sections, but it helps a lot to not only hear, but also visually see what I'm adding or taking away. Additionally, in terms of speed, if I wanted to add or remove a drum sound, I can do that by removing, copying, or doing whatever I have to do to these MIDI events, and that is a much faster way than editing individual MIDI notes if everything was in one track. So in short, separating drum tracks also helps the speed and the arrangement process and helps you make production decisions quicker. So now that you understand a little bit more about my drum programming workflow, let me show you how to set it all up. Now in Studio One, there are basically four ways of programming your drums. And those are by manually dragging in drum sounds or audio loops into the timeline and manually adjusting them based on the grid, by using Impact XT, which is Studio One's native drum sample player, by using Sample One XT, which is Studio One's native sampler, or by using the patterns and variations feature. In my productions, I use a combination of the first three. I don't really use patterns because it forces me to have things in one track, but hey, if that's your jam, then do whatever works for you. Anyway, here's how I break down my setup. I really love Impact XT because of how concise it is. This VST is basically a virtual beat pad that allows you to place all of your favorite drum sounds in different pads and even in different banks. The only problem that I have with Impact XT is that because every pad is a note on the piano roll, it doesn't allow you to pitch your drum sounds up or down like we often see in genres like trap or pop. So then what I do is that for any drums that I do not need to pitch and that I might want to change later, I use Impact XT. The changing part is important because as I start to create, I'll use whatever sounds are in my template and if that works, then great. But if not, then I might decide that I want to change them later. But sometimes that decision comes after I already have a drum groove in place so I wouldn't want to start things all over again. By using Impact XT here, you're basically turning those drum sounds into MIDI notes, and MIDI notes are just simply empty shells that you can load with any sound at any moment. So then if later I do decide that I want a new kick drum sound, then all I have to do is go to my Impact XT and drag that new sample into the kick pad, and I'm good to go. Now, for any sounds that I do want to potentially pitch, like my snares or my close hi-hats, then I put those on instant of Sample 1 XT. Sample 1 XT is a fantastic native sampler in Studio One because it takes any sound that you drop into it and stretches it across the keyboard so that you can pitch it however you'd like. Finally, for any percussive sounds like shaker loops or even crashes, I like to bring those in as audio waves. These sounds usually tend to be long loops or sounds that happen less frequently that are easy enough to replace manually. Having those as audio waves also lets me manipulate them a little further if I do want to get more creative. But there you have it. That is my preferred and what I think is the best way to program drums in Studio One. Now, if you want to have this workflow, but you don't want to go through the trouble of setting it up yourself, then you can pick up my production 
description template down below in the description, which has all of this all ready to go for you. I'll also make sure to leave my macro toolbar, which you saw me use today to create the drums down below in case you want to pick that up as well. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'll be leaving links to my production template and my macro toolbar down below for your convenience. But as always, like this video if you'd like to subscribe if you're not already, but I'll see you on the next one.